practice. It's a great place for revenue. And it also keeps the patient coming back to the practice and you don't lose them to the internet. Check out the incredible insights from Didi Reyes, head of education at ABB. She's gonna tell you exactly how to rethink your approach to contact lens patient education and even direct you toward resources. This is the Think Again podcast. I'm Scott Jens, your host. Let's commit to contact lens patient education. Our guest is Dee Dee Reyes, Manager of Consultation and Education for Specialty Vision Products at ABB Optical Group and Fellow of the Contact Lens Society. Dee Dee, welcome to the Think Again podcast. Thanks for having me, Scott. Yeah, I, you're so passionate about helping others in the industry understand things. And I want to start this session with hearing you talk about the types of organizations that you work with. You work with CLSA, I think you're sitting president. What are the groups that you think give its members the best information to share with patients? Well, and I think there are a number of organizations out there that are really helpful when it comes to that. CLSA, of course, is one of my passions. I've been a member of CLSA since the late 80s. Um, I've been a fellow member since the mid nineties. So now you know how old I am. Um, and I've been the president. I just became president in October and I have a two, my two year session. So I'm very excited about it. Education has always been a passion for me. So CLSA is a great place to reach out to. Um, also the, um, GPLI gas permeable lens Institute for, um, optometrists has a great place to do education. There's a lot of staff education there as well. So there's just a number of organizations, the Scleral Lens Society, um, a lot of the other organizations that are out there are really beneficial and really have education for not only staff members, but for doctors and for patients. So there's some great videos that come out from the Scleral Lens Society on patient education and how to teach patients how to insert and remove lenses and things like that. You can also turn to your labs. When you talk to your labs, the, the labs have lots of education. And I work for ABB. We have our own educational section on patient training and how to train a patient to put in custom soft lenses or GP lenses or scleral lenses or those types of things. So don't be afraid to reach out to the labs as well. That's a great point. You are a consultant and head of education for ABB Optical Group. And you, like others, are a resource not just for helping doctors and staff get the fitting process mm -hmm. right, but for the specifics of patient education, I'm wondering if the doctors really understand the power of what you can offer as a consultant. Well, and I think that's important. And, and you work with your staff as well, because if the patient doesn't understand how to care for their lenses or how to put them in or take them out, they're not going to be successful. So one of the things you have to work as a, as a practitioner that you have to work forward to is teaching your staff to teach your, your customers or your patients to be successful. So with some of the other, like I said, with, with working with consultants, with working with other organizations to learn that process, it's not just reliant on the doctor to teach the patient. You need your staff to be able to teach the patient and to follow up with the patient because the patient's going to call with questions, you know, and can your staff answer those questions or does they have to wait for the doctor to get to them? So you need to make sure your staff is very well trained. Um, the other thing that I'm also very passionate about is paperwork. Give the patient something they can refer back to. Give them something that tells them what solutions they're supposed to be doing. Give them a starter kit so that they can go and order lend, or order solutions if they need to. Or for me, sell the solutions from your practice. It's a great place for revenue. And it also keeps the patient coming back to the practice and you don't lose them to the internet. And you also have your staff there to, to give that support that they need as well. So do you recommend that a practice assigns someone as sort of a lead and contact lens knowledge and awareness, and not the doctor, but a staff person who's a first level go-to with some lieutenants? Or do you sort of say everyone should have equal amounts of knowledge? I think you should have one person that has the knowledge that's willing to share Everybody in the practice needs to know and everybody has their place. All your back office technicians, they're the ones that talk to the patients first. You have the front desk. 
they need to have some information about about products and those types of things as well. So I think it it varies from practice to practice and how your um, your practice runs. But you do need to have somebody that's got all of the knowledge that's willing to share and then just build from that because not everybody stays in every practice. So you need somebody in your practice that that is willing to share that information because I can tell you there, there are practitioners and it's people out there that goes, I, I saw that, I want that person in my practice. So again, utilizing Contact Lens Society of America, utilizing all of the education available for technicians and AOA has a great piece for technicians as well. So utilizing that and getting your staff up to snuff, get your staff certified. There are certification processes that staff can go through, get them certified, get them confident, get them, give them the knowledge to grow and bring that forward. And and it gives them a place to grow in the business as well. And they don't leave you. That's a great point. Hey friends, this is Scott Jens, your host of the Think Again podcast. I hope you'll hit the like button when you're viewing our videos and please consider sharing the content links with your colleagues. You know, you were mentioning care systems and recommending good care systems, sometimes not only offering the trial kit, but having saleable product in office. Some practices have great success with that. Some have Mm -hmm. found product expires. But there is this idea of a commitment to the patient understanding. And most of us, when we get around our cousins at a family reunion or we're going somewhere with somebody and, you know, we're at a hotel and somebody's pulling out a bottle of who knows what to take care of lens lenses. The solution part, the care systems and so, contact lens solutions is after decades of efforts by us, still terrible. Um, yeah, is exactly. it because there's so much influence by the retailers who sell things you know, at a discount? Uh, I'm trying to figure out why that's still a problem. Well, and, and again, everybody's looking for a bargain. But I think if you, from a practice standpoint, if you take that product and don't make it a product, make it part of your presentation to the patient. If the patient understands that the product you're recommending is the best thing for their lenses and and to not go away from that, they won't have problems. I mean, we see these patients that come in all the time and they've got buildup on their lenses and, you know, what solutions are you using? Well, I don't know. Every patient that walks in your practice, you sh- they should be able to say, well, what would what, you recommend to me, doctor? And that's where you keep those products. And if you're selling those products to the patient, not only is it an, like an annual process where you're making profitability, but they know that the patient knows that you support that product and you're supporting them and they'll keep coming back. It's, it's just too important, particularly with specialty products where absolutely we don't have one day disposables, right? And there's this sort of separation of the sea where the one day products have eliminated care for some people. And I think that's a really important point. Well, and how many times have you seen patients go in and we've all done it, gone into the pharmacy and went, oh, I don't remember. It was a blue bottle or I, I think it was green or I think it was white and not knowing what what they're doing. So education about their products and what those products are doing and why they're doing it and how they're doing it, I think is really important as well. And and again, I'm a firm believer in something the patient can take with them and go, this is the picture of what I need if they're not going to buy it from the practice. Good point. So now I want to talk about the lenses themselves. I have felt that too few people understand that contact lenses are medical devices, right? It's a piece of plastic worn on top of living tissue. I'm wondering if that has been a miss for the eye care industry over the last, you know, 50 years of growth of contact lens fittings. How much would you recommend we push that message uh, as a frontline conversation? Well, I'm I'm a firm believer in, in educating patients as well. If a patient understands that this piece of plastic that that they're putting in their eye is not just a piece of plastic, and they can get one, and they're all one in the same is huge. In specialty lenses, we do that very, very well. Mm -hmm. This is the only lens that works for your eye. And here's the reason why we don't do that for soft lenses. We don't explain to the, to the patient that, you know, this is not just a piece of plastic. 
there's a lot of technology behind it. There's a lot of other things behind it as well. And you can damage your eye if you just go willy nilly and wearing them, you know, 15 days in a row or, or whatever. So the patient has to understand that it is a medical device. And I think, again, that goes back to the technicians understanding that it's a medical device and sharing that knowledge with the patient. And I think that comes down to doctors making sure that they work through office meetings and planning mm -hmm. sessions on what the scripts are that we're all going to agree to use, right? There's going to be key phrases. Um, and it seems like you're really big on making sure that whatever the doctor feels the vernacular and language is going to be has been passed across to the right people. Yeah. You talked about the front desk earlier too. Um, and it se seems like it should be something that's in, in office meetings every now and again. Well, I, and I absolutely agree. I think you should have an office meeting at least once a month and talk about specialty lenses or talk about lenses in general. And, and for those, the people, the new people that come in, they learn from the people that are there. So that education piece is huge. You know, if you've got somebody that says, oh, well, a lens is a lens, but the doctor knows that a lens is not a lens, mm. but you've got your staff going, oh, well, we'll just give you this or we'll give you that. That's not a, a medical device. You, the, the staff needs to understand that contact lenses are medical devices and that they're not just willy nilly. So I think education is a huge piece of that. Um, educating your patients is a huge piece of that. So you mentioned earlier that, for example, the CLMA website has great documents for use in patient education. Can anyone access those? Do they need to become a member of the organization? How does that work? For CLMA, CLMA there is a, a small fee to be a member for CLMA um, or for the, the organization. But you can also go to some of your, um, your labs. Some of your labs have that information as well. Um, there are, on the internet, there are generic forms that you can take and adjust. Um, I know ABB has several forms that we utilize that are generic. So they can be customized to the practice. We'll give you the baseline, but then you can customize it to the practice depending on how your practice works. I agree with you that paper documentation, we're all moving away from paper, but mm -hmm. paper documentation is really still critical in informing patients. Is there, to your knowledge, any electronic source of patient education that has been proven to be useful, right? I remember manufacturers used to try to send patients messages. I know there's a few reordering systems that do that. Are there any th things that I'm missing that are electronic systems that can provide patients guidance on replacement schedules or anything else? Absolutely, there are. There are a number of, of organizations out there that do that. Um, sometimes they're company specific. You know, ABB has their Abbey website. Um, Alcon has Marlow. There are some other pieces like that. If you're doing some sort of online ordering through the practice, um, and that's important when you're ordering through the doctor's practice, there are a lot of pieces of information that can help with that. Um, and a lot of these pieces are electronic. You know, we're, we live in an electronic world. So especially the younger generation, they don't want paper. They want something that's electronic and you can do electronic fill in on a lot of these, these documents and stuff and, and get them electronically to the practices or to the patients as well. Seems like it's pretty easy. I'm going to give you the last word. This is a commitment that we need to make. Uh, patient information sharing needs to be doubled down. Are there anything, any other processes that you'd recommend a practice considers to optimize patient education? Well, I, again, I think there's a number of pieces that we can use, the GPLI, your, your local labs, any one of those pieces, just to get that information to the patient. If, if the practice can get it in their hands and get it to the patient, they're the ones that are prescribing a medical device. They need to, um, the practices need to put that out there that this is a medical device and to really understand what that medical device is. And I, I think it, it falls to the practitioner to, to, to push that out to the patient as well. Hey, folks, you can sit down and write your own Word documents if you want. But absolutely, after, after listening to the DD today, I am positive that we have plenty of opportunities to expand it. Even if you've been in practice for 30 years, improve your patient communication. DD Reyes from ABB Optical Group, thank you for sharing your expertise on today's Think Again podcast. Great, Scott. Thank you very much.
And that's it for today's Think Again podcast, brought to you by GPN Visions, a peer-to-peer learning community to help grow your eye care business.